In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of First Kings. And to understand this passage, you need to understand sort of the players in the situation that is happening here. So this passage takes place after King Solomon has passed. And his son, Rehoboam, has taken over. So he puts his son on his throne, and this is at the time where Israel is a united kingdom. At this point, they have had Saul, and they have had, I believe, Saul's son, Ithamar, sitting on the throne. But the kingdom was kind of divided at that point between uh, the seat of Saul and David. And then David unites the kingdom, and then Solomon continues ruling that united kingdom. And then comes Rehoboam. Rehoboam is the king's son, not quite as wise as his father, but still somebody that seems to, to have some wisdom. And he learned at his, his father's feet, so you would think that he would be a pretty wise person. Rehoboam gets together with his advisors and tries to decide what kind of king do I want to be. And three people, three groups of people, I should say, consult with him. First, the people consult with him. He asks them, okay, people, what, what kind of king would you want? What kind of people, what kind of king would you want me to be? And they said, be somebody that eases up on the yoke. And, and because Solomon kind of drove us hard from time to time and it, it was grievous to us. So if you could just back off a little bit, that would be something that we would find very helpful. And then you also have the second group, the elders, now, when Solomon met with the elders, what the elders counseled him to do was to listen to the words of the people. These were people that also advised Solomon, maybe even some that advised David. Probably not because of how long Solomon's reign was, but, you know, possibly people that have been around even since the time of Rehoboam's grandfather that have seen things like this come and go. And they said, yeah, you, you should probably pay attention to them. You should probably hear them out and do what they ask. And then finally, you have Rehoboam's friends. These are people that Rehoboam has grown up with that are just buddies of his. And what they say is, no, you don't want to be seen as a weak king. What you want to do is you want to go and you want to be actually harsher than they were beforehand. And Rehoboam kind of sits around for a few days listening to the counsel of these different groups. And eventually he does come to a conclusion and reaches a decision, and that comes in 1 Kings 12, 13-15, which says... The king answered the people harshly, for he forsook the advice of the elders, which they had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of events from the Lord, that he might establish his word, which the Lord spoke to Ahijah, the Shelemite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So when Rehoboam comes to this crossroad, he eventually decides not to listen to the people, not to listen to the elders, to listen to his friends. And because he wants to puff up his own ego and be seen as this great king and to do what he wants to do and accomplish what he wants to accomplish. He says, no, I'm going to do the opposite of what the people want. I'm actually going to drive harder. And what's important to understand about this is the reason that it's so wrong for a handful of people to ignore the other people is because mankind was not meant to have that kind of power over other people. You'll remember that God didn't even want a king in Israel. It was years and years, decades, before God finally relented to the children of Israel because they wouldn't shut up about it and gave them a king. God's plan was always for him to be the king and them to just follow God's laws and to listen to the judges when disputes came up. So there was a legal system, there was a criminal judgment system, there was a civil judgment system, but ultimately God was the one that was in charge and Israel was a nation of laws, not of men. 
that changed when Saul took the throne. Not because of Saul, because Saul actually started out pretty good. But power tends to corrupt. And you look through all the history, God predicts this when it originally comes, that there would be really horrible kings. There was not a single good king in Israel. There were some good kings of Judah. And you have David and Solomon that overall definitely had their mistakes and still caused Israel a great deal of pain and suffering, but were still pretty good kings. And then you have a handful of other kings that there's some nice things said about, Hezekiah, Uzziah, um, Josiah. So you have a handful of good kings, but the vast majority of them were nightmares. And it's because mankind cannot be trusted with that much power over other human beings. And I'm saying this universally. I can't, King David couldn't, King Solomon couldn't, even the good kings that God lists as somebody that did try to follow God. They were human beings, they were flawed, they made mistakes, and those mistakes cost people in the long run because nobody's supposed to have that kind of absolute power over other people. And what happened with Rehoboam is the same thing that in a lot of ways is happening in our country and in other countries right now. A handful of elites that think they're smarter and better and wiser than everybody else comes together and makes decisions about other people's lives in their country. They think, you know what, if we can just get together, we can solve all the world's problems. We know better than all those little peasants out there in the flyover country. We're going to fix it. We'll handle it ourselves. We'll tell the people what they need, and we'll be the ones that lead this country. Rehoboam could have been a great king. He could have been a great king. All he had to do was listen to the people and listen to elders that had experience and wisdom beyond what he and his, you know, essentially his frat bro buddies, and I say this as a frat boy, so keep that in mind, but a bunch of his knuckle-headed young friends were telling him to do. And what happens in the Bible tells us as a direct result of this is that the kingdom was divided. Because when the children of Israel in the northern kingdom heard this, they said, look, we don't really hold a lot of, you know, special place in our heart for Rehoboam anyway, and we don't really want to ally ourselves with him anymore. And so they split. The kingdom was never the same after that. The kingdom never got reunited. And eventually the northern kingdom was taken captive by Syria. The southern kingdom was taken captive by Babylon. I have no idea how different Israel's history would be if Rehoboam had just done the smart thing and actually listened to what the people had to say. Even if he wound up reaching a different decision, ultimately, the fact that he refused to listen says a lot about the kind of person that he was and the reason that he will always be remembered as the king under which the kingdom of Israel split and never really came back. That's Rehoboam's legacy. And when you understand that, you can see how thinking that you're so much better or smarter than all of the people out there and that you don't have to listen to other people, because most of us are never going to be in the position where we're like that. We should always avoid thinking that we ought to be in a position of power like that, to where we can just tell other people how they should run their lives. But even if the vast majority of us never are, it's always important for us to remember this. This is the takeaway for the average person that's not going to have this level of influence. Show some humility. Remember that you don't have it all figured out, and listen to other people. There's a reason that God's Word tells us that there is a wisdom in a multitude of counsel. There's a reason that the kings that tended to listen to lots of other people and other opinions tended to do a lot better than the ones that didn't. There's a reason that there are whole sections of the Bible that talk about trying to find reconciliation with others, and a big step of that is talking to them and listening to them. You see, ultimately, the reason that we talk to one another, we bear another's burdens, we confess our sins to each other is because God understood there was a wisdom in taking the assumption that we don't have it all figured out. We are a more godly person. We are more like Christ when we assume that, you know what, we're not the, the smartest person in the room. 
we're not going to be able to figure everything out. Even if we are the most intelligent person in the room, that doesn't necessarily mean we have all the answers. Humbling ourselves and trusting on others, and more importantly, trusting in God, that's the way that we find true wisdom. And unfortunately, that's something that King Rehoboam never really understood. So let's take a lesson from this and not be like him. Let's open ourselves to the opinions, the thoughts, and the concerns of others. That will make us more empathetic, more sympathetic, and allow us to live more like Christ lived. Because remember, Christ could see into the hearts of men. He knew what people's problems were before they even said them, but he still made it a point to listen anyway, even though he already knew all of that, because it made those people feel important and it made them more apt to listen to him when he imparted his wisdom to them as well. That's how to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Stay the course, friends. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.